device, like an algorithm or something, or something like that, that detects music, like Shazam or something similar, or whatever it is, program similar, and to see if it can distinct between original music and uh, someone's dancing now.
Oh, okay. So this is like a, a hockey game? Yeah, we went to Dallas, and then we went to Tampa, but Tampa was canceled because they had a hole in their eyes, and then right. we went to Houston. Oh, okay. And in Houston, somebody requested your song. Right. Gave me $10, and I'm not going to play it. Right. Go, this is a hockey That's game. what you were playing. Yeah, just Your now. song, yeah, yeah. I go, I'm not going to play it. I go, this is a hockey game. And then he gave me a $10 tip. I said, well, okay, well, it's going to be between second and third period. Right. When people are drunk. So. It's pretty, I mean, it's not like. Well, it's not a It's not like a completely game. simple song, you know. No, I mean, especially on the organ. Right, right, at a hockey so game. Go, God, dude. So. It would be interesting to hear, like, in a big arena, like a hockey uh, game, you know. Organ, uh, you can have a little organ and it's gigantic. Yeah. So I played it. And I was in shock. Everybody started singing. Oh, right, right. All of them sang. I go, whoa, whoa, what's this? You know? Deserve more than $10. Everybody yeah. sang it. And I go, you got to be kidding me. I started talking to the piano player. He's over there having a conversation. He actually was in, uh, invited to play at a hockey game in Houston. And one of the guys that was running the show asked him to play... Uh, your song by Elton John at a, uh, you know, like at a stadium hockey game. So he actually, uh, they gave him $10 to play it. This was a long time ago. And um, so he played the uh, Your Song by Elton John and the entire uh, crowd sang along. You know, this was at a hockey game in Houston. Uh, they gave him a whopping $10. He's actually really talented. I didn't get his name though. But uh, there's his piano set up. He was like a pretty interesting guy. He, he had a lot, a lot of uh, piano stories. He never stopped. It's got a full tip jar. Pretty good though. Your song is pretty good. It's Elton John. He says it's pretty difficult to play. I told him, you know, I usually just know the first riff parts of a piano song. I tried to learn uh, Beethoven's Elise, but a bunch of other songs too. But uh, I think it'd be cool to put 10, 20, 1977, the song about Leonard Skinner, add some piano stuff to it. If any piano players are out there. As for the uh, Cole and Linda band. I talked to the piano player. He actually hung out with Lou Diamond Phillips at a uh, King and I when it came to Bass Hall. He actually uh, chatted with him and hung out with him and everything. He said that there was a, a certain pitch that he, he couldn't hit in the, uh, the actual uh, you know performance of King and I. And so they had to get an oboe out to help him you know hit the pitch and everything. He was getting real frustrated. And he called the guy a bitch. This is actually what he said, but I don't know if it's true. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's what he said. Yeah, I guess he, he got upset. But he actually, uh, this guy right here, his brother actually is a big Broadway uh, music guy. You know, he's like really big in music. Had brought King and I in from Broadway with Lou Diamond Phillips to the Bass Hall. And he, he just came to help. But... Uh, Get all his information later. He has like tons of stories about the piano. I don't know if he played piano in King and I uh, when it came to the Bass Hall, but he said he, he helped out with some of the music stuff. But uh, it's amazing that Lou Diamond Phillips actually did Broadway and was in King and I. He said he, he pretty handled it pretty well, you know. Uh, he just must have got frustrated at a rehearsal or something and just, you know, let out the B word. I also found out that the Tom Cruise picture was actually from Crystals, which is an early, from Metal Vice. The guy that ran this place was a kid, and he actually stole the photo at another restaurant and brought it over to this restaurant. True story. But the Lou Diamond Phillips is actually genuine. He actually really ate here. Probably when he was doing Bass Hall King and I. G-O-N-D-Z Goints or something like that. I asked him if it was Polish, but he didn't respond. Uh, 
place is amazing. It's top four restaurants of Fort Worth. They actually have live music. I want to say they have live music every night. Every one of these faces probably have a story behind it. Oh, wow, check this out. Yeah, I'm going to say the name was G-W-O-N-D-Z. Richard, it's first name. Thanks, Richard. Appreciate it. This story, story about Lou Diamond. Appreciate that. It's pretty cool. So I would continue talking to Richard, the piano player. And he told me some few more stories about how some crazy uh, entertainers they've had here that were like have a microphone and they'd entertain and they brought in mostly like polka music. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I have some sausage. <clears throat> polka music, or my little Woody Allen. <clears throat> but he told me uh, as he was walking away, he was like, uh, I'm not really allowed to talk to people. There's a reason for that. But anyway, he has some great Lou Diamond Phillips stories. I used to have that exact thing right there. See that that uh, beer mug? Yeah. That exact one. On, I, I didn't know. Uh, yeah. This is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. What is this? That's a big horn. Okay. Yeah. Like like rucola, a rucola. Oh, they play it. That is so crazy. This is a whole entire, it's actually a horn. So it's right here. It's very crazy. This thing too, right here. That's a beautiful man right there. Beautiful. Beautiful. 